my name and if you don't know me or if you know me this is me fikri smile and i'm an mvp for developer technology for like last 14 years yeah as 14 years and i have this small startup called peach it we are working on office 365 development and azure.net uh, cloud applications plus power platform so we are just we are just building power applicate power platform applications for customers quick can it's very quick and just we build some application within like 2 3 weeks for some customers that's that's it and on our company and this is me on linkedin and twitter same handle just linkedin slash in so if you go to linkedin it should be linkedin.com slash in slash victory smile or if you go to twitter it just slash victory smile and this is youtube so you can just go to youtube.com dot com slash ye ask victory so if you can subscribe there there are just plenty plenty of tutorials on hp.net co and react js and some some other courses on power platform so i'm just updating regularly some videos on basically i'm looking at their own local singlish language to give out this information so let's get started on so today my aim is to like give you some idea about blazor and what does it offer you within dotnet 5 that's my main purpose of doing this session so what is blazor so anybody who's coming from react js react js you can just or maybe angular angular or maybe vue js you know what about this so react js angular vue js so three different stuff to develop front end applications who they using javascript as their main language and now they have some typescript as well so whatever it is this is a scripting language and if you are a dotnet developer or maybe a c sharp developer from you are developing back end applications so there will be some learning curve to master these things like react js angular vue js definitely those are javascript frameworks you have to learn javascript to work with so normally as a sp.net developer we used to create stuff using when we create sp.net web forms we used to create some stuff using dotnet plus jquery if you remember so we used jquery to get some stuff and then before that we used raw javascript like vanilla javascript so my advice is like uh, if you are working with these things you better learn some javascript and then you can master one of these things but my aim is not to teach or show what these things are my aim is to like show you blazor right blazor is like uh, blazor yeah so if you work with hp dot and mvc mvc you have this razor razor syntax which is chtml or vb html right so it's coming from microsoft razor and then they came up okay what if we can just run razor on a browser then they came up this name called blazor right so a browser which is a browser razor running inside the browser right so this is blazor it's the good thing about it is like if you have any of c sharp knowledge right a basic c sharp knowledge where you are developer using a c sharp uh, or you are a, like a back end developer using c sharp or if you are developing apis if you are developing whatever you develop using c sharp you can just bring that actual so i think i remember so malin was doing this session on dotnet developer forum like i think 2 years back when it, this 2 uh, years or 1 and a half years back when blazor was released he was showing some stuff okay now it came to a production level so you can develop enterprise level applications using blazor main purpose is like if you know c sharp if you know sp.net that's enough you don't need anything else to develop blazor application now start with a plain old blazor application i will go through the project structure and and i'll go through what is this project and how it works right before that blazor has this two different architecture blazor architecture architecture yes architecture you have two different thing one is the first one is the web assembly web assembly assembly another one is the server side two different server side like right? two different stuff web assembly it's called wasm and the other one is the server side right 
two different stuff. So what is the different? There's small difference between these things. The first one is like, let's look at the WSM one. We'll start with the project. So it's Visual Studio 2019, right? You have this Visual Studio 19. Let's click on this one, create new project. You create new project, you just select Blaze app. And this is how we start, or we can just say Blaze app. And then next, right? I'll give it a name, uh, Blaze uh, demo. Demo.net conf. Right, I'm gonna save it under this one. Let's create the project. Right. Now in this project, so you will select .NET 5. So I have .NET 5 here. So even from .NET 3.1, it works fine, no problem. But so I want to just show it within .NET 5. First, you have two different choices here. The first one is the Blazor server app. The other one is the Blazor WebAssembly app. I will start with the Blazor WebAssembly app. Now, if you start with that, and then you are given two options here. ASP.NET Core hosted, which is like it will automatically create your ASP.NET Core application, a web API application as the backend, right? So you can start with the Blazor front end and WebAssembly, and then you will get a ASP.NET Core hosted web application, which is a, a web API one. You can just write your backend code straightforward. That's the one. The other one is the progressive web application, which is it will just create Imagine after you create this web application, you if you want, you can just make it as a like a simple application, desktop application. People won't recognize it. it. They will see as a normal native application, but still it's a progressive web application, but still it's a web application. So I will show it later. Then I can just tick this box. If you want, you can just tick this one. I'll just tick this one. So just a single tick. It will make sure I'll show you how it works. First, we select the WebAssembly app and a progressive. Let's create. Now, this is your first Blazor application. The structural wise or the project structural wise, it's the same. It's nothing wrong, but only thing is how it behaves, the architectural wise. The first one is like we call it the Blazor application. Let's, its packages are still downloading. Let's do a build first. So if you see here, it will just download installing Microsoft ASP.NET component WebAssembly. Right, it's still installing. So if you look at this project structure, it look like a normal ASP.NET application. It has web root and it has pages and it has a shared folder and it has this program.cs. So everything is explainable and then this runs on IIS Express, right? So if you double click on this program.cs, you will see this part, right? It says, WebAssembly host builder, not just web host builder. So normal ASP.NET applications start with a web host builder, but this one it says WebAssembly builder. And again, create the components. This is my root component app. Root component is if you just go inside this folder, WW root, you will see an index HTML. Index HTML has a where it is a div. See. Everything will be loaded on this. If you have coming, if you are coming a background from React.js or if you are coming back from Vue.js or maybe Angular, you will know this. What is this? This is the container which is which hosting your Blazor application, which is the front end application, right? So it's the same thing. So you just go here. It says, okay, this is my root root component. Use this as. If you want another app, another another div, you can just name it create the div and name it something else and then you have to change it here. So this is the starting point of the application and then there's a webhook like uh, it's not a webhook. It's like it's a uh, dependency. In, it's an injection. It's going to inject this HTTP client on everywhere. So why HTTP client? I will show you to next stop. Then we have this build async. That means builder build async. This is the builder pattern. That means we create a web host builder, like a web assembly host builder, and then we tell the system, okay, this is my root component, which is under index.html and this div. And next up will be, okay, at scope means like create this HTTP client and make it available everywhere. That's the main idea behind it. In simple words, it says, okay, I have my HTTP client and then make sure it's available on my old pages. That's why it says at scoped, right? So you, you might have different stuff. You can just say, 
builder dot services dot add transient or add singleton add transient. They're two different things. Add transient means it will create an instance of HTTP client every single time you use it. And then the add scope means like it will create within your request. Like if you just create an add singleton means it will create one instance for the entire application. So this is dependency injection, but we're using add scope and send this HTTP client. Why you need it, you will just know it here. So if you go under app.razor, right, this is the main part, right? App.razor says, okay, this is my web assembly and there are some tags coming from Blazor and says, okay, this is my main layout. So layout will be under shared folder. This is the main layout, right? This is the main layout and it has some information saying, okay, inherit anything body, it goes here. And you have a navigation menu. It's a different component. These are called Blazor components. You can just write like HTML. I will show it to you. And then this is the main layout razor. And within that one, if the most important file is this is imports, right? This imports means everything shared by your Blazor application, which is using HTTP, JSON, forms, all this. So if you say ASP.NET Core components, routing, web virtualization, and HTTP and JS interrupt. JS interrupt means in case, imagine within Blazor you can use, there are already developed JavaScript libraries. For example, if you are, if you are a React user or a Angular user, you know if you want to do HTTP call, you can use Axios. If you want to use Axios, that library, this is the part. If there are any existing JavaScript library, you can use JS intro to communicate with within Blazor C Sharp and the JavaScript library. But still, I, I, I'm not sure whether you can use it or you don't have to use it. But still, if you want JavaScript integration, you can use this one. And these two will differentiate depending on your project. So if you look at this is my namespace for my project. It says Blazor demo.net conf. And it says a Blazor demo.net conf shared folder. So two different things are available for me. Right, and inside WW folder you have CSS. It is Bootstrap, and some sample data for the JSON. See, so whether data is some JSON file. Let's try to execute this project. Let's open it. Let's wait for a second. Let's close these two. Yes. Okay, it's loading right now. This is the normal default application. If you look at, I go to more tools, I get developer tools. If you look at this uh, network, right? So let's refresh at the first time. You will see these things, right? So the network request. So whatever the things they have loaded. So we look at the counter, right? And then if you go to this fetch data, see? Now it's fetching up stuff. Let's. Uh, All, then you will see. Let's refresh again. You will see under here. So this is the WebAssembly part. And if you look at the network tab and see nothing will load. So click, click, click. So it's still. And then if you go back to home and then come back to counter and click, 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 it still work. If you click on fetch data, it's keep coming from this. No. Network call, so everything is on client side, so everything works fine. Let's look at this code a bit. Let's go back to my counter code. I'll just stop it. So inside pages, you will see three different pages. The first one is for the counter, and the second one is for the fetch data, and the first one is for the index. So index page, look at it, how it starts. It starts from here. It says page slash, and then whatever the HTML code, and whatever some things, and this is this will be the part of like for example this will be the blazer component so let's see blazer com where this component is if you go to the shared folder you will see the survey survey of prompt dot razor so this is the component so the components will be different from this one right so this is the actual normal html and it has a parameter saying title see the title and that's it so when you call this thing 
from the index sprite is a server prompt and then title. See, the title will be under this component as a parameter. It's like a, imagine if you, this is the server prompt is a C sharp class. This will be a public property. It's the same thing. Parameter saying, okay, title, and you have it there, right? This is the client side one. So let's get back and let's create a new page. I'm going to say, okay, add new, raise a page. This raise a page. Look at these two different things. Raise a page is not Blazor, which is because raise a page will get a different thing. Let's get a create a Blazor component. If you look at this one, click live mouse button. Let's create a raise a page first. So it says raise a page empty and add. Let's now give it a name. So let's say not index. If you look at this one, see it says index.chtml. So you have to remember this. We are not going to create a razor page. Razor means you are using MVC applications and MVC application has this information like index.chtml, like I mentioned before, like in uh, MVC applications, right? So we don't need that. So what you have to do is like we just let's cancel it again. You have to click right mouse button and say add razor component. If you go to razor component, you will see the extension is say razor. Don't do this mistake. So this is these are not razor pages. These are the components. Everything in Blazor is known as components because every component will be rendered using these things, this one and these things and under here. It's my div under this div. So every component will send to here. That's you have to understand, right? Go, let's go back to my pages. I'm going to create right mouse and new razor component. That's you have to see. Remember, let's say a name. I'm going to say, OK, uh, about let's say about. Let's add. Now look at the code. It says about and this is the code. So if you make it like this can be used, right? This can be used within these things. Now it's but if you look at the difference between this one, you say counter, it has something like this. So if without this code, it will treat it as a component, not a razor, not a blazer page. For that, we'll start like say about. Just go up. You can say at page, same page, and then you have to give the path. Path, and then you're going to give a name about. So this will be treated as a route. So when you call this application, you can say, okay, about. Let's go back. Let's do it. Now you have it here. You don't see any yet, but still, if you click slash about enter, you will see it right now. It's, it's going back. So how to just get it into the menu? Let's go back, close this, come back to then, and I'm going to back to my navigation menu dot razor. See this file navigation menu. You will see this. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it at the bottom. So don't worry about the icon. It says uh, let's create an icon saying oh, I dot some icon maybe login. So this is coming from all else coming from uh, Bootstrap. So don't worry about it. It's, it's displaying now the next step. The navigation link. It's a nav link, and this will be again class nav link is from Bootstrap. And the only thing you have to say it's just say fetch data. Right, I'm going to say about. Next step. So that's one part of doing it, right? So we added to into the menu, but let's see how it works. Right? So still it says navigation match and then it says nothing about it. So link, link, link. So let's go back to my this page. Uh, main layout. So menu, that's okay. Index. Data. Okay, where is my route? Okay, yeah. Fetch data. Now, if you look at this one, so now link, it says fetch data. Now, here 
it should be the about. I'm going to say about, right? This is a nav link class, and then href should be about. What is it? So it's coming from this one. This about. Let's have a look at it right now. Now you will see this about the counter, fetch data, and above. See, no refreshes, nothing. So we just created. So no JavaScript even. Let's close it. Now let's add some C sharp code. So let's see like this. Now, for example, I'm going to say uh, about. We'll start with a variable. We can say a private. Normally we just start with private and string. I'm going to say about page title. Let's say page title. Right, page title is blank. For now, this is C sharp code. We all know. Right, next step, I'm going to say I'm going to create another H2. We just press add, add key, and then you will see page title. See, that's variable. Again, this is C sharp. Just double click so you have that one. Next step, I'm going to create another small button here, saying button, and I'm going to say a class should be button, and then button primary. It's coming from again Bootstrap. I'm going to say show title. It will be a button, right? Now, next step, I'm going to create another private void display title saying I'm going to replace this page title variable saying hello. So maybe let's say dot net conf 2020 virtual event event Colombo. Right, this is again C sharp code. Let's paste it. Next step, what should we do? We're going to trigger a click event. See, now the initial sense. You can just say, okay, on click, what should happen? So let's say at on click. This is how you connect on click and enter space double quotes. And you have to say, okay, what to click? Let's say display. See, intelligence is already there. Just double click. You have the button class on click display title. This, this is totally C sharp code. So you don't have to know JavaScript, nothing. Let's save this one. And let's execute again. Right now we have it like to click that one. Now click about. You don't see anything. Yes, now if you just click show title. See, it just is just C sharp code, nothing else. Even though the best part is like even just the best part you can just say is imagine you can do. You can do like, like this. Let's stop. You can do like this. You can just say using uh, HTTP, say new HTTP client. You can just access any sorry, HTTP client. An API as well. So that's you can just do that part as well. This is just C sharp code getting you on JavaScript. Like it's like a front end application using C sharp. This is the basics of Blazor. That's one way of doing it. Let's go to another demo. Imagine you have an existing ASP.NET application. Let's say I'll just mimic that. I'll go to file new project. All right, file new project. I'm going to say ASP.NET web application. I'm going to say next. This is a part of .NET 5, .NET 5 new update. I'm going to create, uh, not see, let's, I'm going to add to this one. Let's say add, add new project. Uh, let's select ASP.NET Core application next. Let's say uh, MVC demo and create. Let's select uh, ASP.NET Core web app. So sorry, MVC application, right? This is normal MVC application. Imagine you have this MVC application already, or if you're starting an MVC application, the one thing you have to do is like, if you can tick this one, if you're starting a new project, you can tick says enable Razor runtime compilation. It doesn't do anything. What it does was it will create you. It will just get you a NuGet package. If you are an existing uh, ASP.NET uh, model view control or MVC application, what you can do is you can just Get the NuGet package. I'll just take this one and just create. 
I will show that. So it will be just simple as that. Now, if you look at these dependencies, you will see this package. So if you don't have it, what you have to do is you just go to your MVC application and just go to tools and say NuGet package manager. Uh, manage package this for solution. I search for this package saying uh, not assembly. Say Microsoft component web assembly. Sorry, not that one. This one. Get HP.NET Core MVC Razor runtime compilation. That's it. Imagine you have an existing application right now, right? So th that's the thing you have to do. Next step will be now we have to tell this MVC application. Let's try this MVC application. So it's a normal MVC application, see, with page refreshes. So you know it's a simple MVC application. That's no problem. First step you have to do is, so I'll just, uh, let's start from beginning. First step you have to do is like, okay, now we have this thing. First step is like you have to create a file in the root, right mouse click, and then add new item. Select Blazor component. You will say under imports dot razor. That's it. So this will be a razor component which is imports. We can just, if you want, we can just copy paste this imports from here. Imports the same packages you need till this part. You just copy this part and paste it under this file. Just delete and that's it. And you have to add using your MVC demo namespace. So it will be loosed everywhere. MVC, there it is, using MVC demo. That's it. <coughs> right? That's the first step. So let's save it. So you might need this WebAssembly. So I have some stuff here for my notepad. Let's open that. Don't save. Let's open that from my documents. I think this. No. It's this one. So let's copy these things. But I want to dislike these items. I'll just copy paste. So I'll go through it. You need system.http and the authorization and the components authorization, the forms, routing, and web. That's it you need, right? So next step will be we'll just create it and then you have to go to your shared folder views. You will go under shared and layout because on MVC we know this is your layout normally we use, right? So first thing you have to do is like tell Blazor should identify okay, where is my root? You have to tell like you just start with base and dash. So now Blazor knows this is my root. This is the first step. Let's stop this one. So Blazor knows, so okay, this is my root. Sorry, base, then href. Stay my root. This is my root. So Blazor will look at it wherever you want. So let's go back. Now that's one thing. Next step, you have to add some support for Blazor. This, this is how you do that. Just go down. It's nothing. No, you can add the script tag. Script. Right. You have to say source. It's normally this path is under slash framework. Let me copy that from my other project. Or you can just oh, sorry, you can go here and copy that under short main layer. HTML should be the same thing, same thing, right? You copy it and let's paste under my layout HTML right here. But only thing you have to change is it is not WebAssembly, it should be blazer dot server js because it 
my asp.net application .net co application is running this file is not available when you uh, compile it it will create it for you right so blazor.server.js this is the one you have to create which is running on blazor server the blazor service now i go to the blazor server now if you look at web assembly on blazor it was running on client side but blazor service different story it will do the same thing let's create a blazor server project and explain it first let's add that and add where is add new project i'm going to create a blazor you will see the difference blazor next i'm say blazor server the server create a server application yes http is no problem create right if you look at this blazor server application you will see difference so if you look at the same thing you don't see any you just have the program cs only but on the server application there are different things you have the program cs that's no problem it's the same thing see now look at the it says create host builder but on this one it said let's close everything else close all but this yes now let's go to this this one is my dotnet demo now side by side let's make it side by side how does it let's make it side by side yes now look at these two on my left side on my left side it's the web assembly version of the blazor and my right side this is the server version of the blazor right if you look at this code server version start with create host builder and the web assembly version it says web assembly host builder that's that's one one way because create host builder is not, that's a normal asp.net co application so we create the host which is maybe iis host or maybe the kestrel and it will run and then everything else is the same but here it's a bit different it's it's forces http client right now in the second one i close this one if you look at the startup cs on blazor server startup cs has something it start the server side blazor and because on this one it didn't have a startup so now we have the blazor server side thing and if you scroll down you will see something else another one saying endpoints dot map blazor hub so this is the one who's like communicating with with your browser and the server so normally blazor uses uh because uh, signal r this is the signal r hub for your communication normally your front end application whatever the c sharp application will communicate through this one so you don't have to write any fancy javascript nothing you just endpoints dot map blazor hub it will say uh, it will create the signal signal r who hub and then it will communicate automatically you don't have to worry about anything just this endpoint dot map blaze this is how the server works so it will render anything on back end server and push it to the front end but you won't see any differences it will look like simultaneous it will look like a front end application nothing else this is the blazor server so now you know blazor server let's go back to my mvc demo i will coming back to this blazor server later let's see on my program.cs it's so a normal host builder like the blazor server now in the startup cs first we were at layout just that's why we tell okay this is what we have to do the server says server dot something just that's it right now this is one part of doing it and next step we have to do is on the program.cs let's go to program startup.cs and scroll down one thing you have to add here it says on your mvc application it says services dot at control view seven and you just put dot and you can just scroll down add it should be uh this one say add razor runtime compilation this is the one you have to add right so that's why we installed this nuget package runtime compilation so you have this runtime compilation if your existing application you just add this nuget package and under configuration services 
you say services dot add control use with dot add razor runtime compilation. That's one part. And next thing, finally, under app endpoints, you just map the signal or hub endpoints dot can say map blazer hub. That's it. Just close it. Semicolon. Now you have setup is done. Now let's create a small click right mouse button. Add new item. I'm going to say blaze razor component. Let's say counter. Counter dot razor add. Now you have this page. First thing you have to do. You can say this is a component. No, don't worry about it. Just this is a component. Let's say let's change this name counter running in ASP.NET MVC application. .NET MVC. Right, let's create a button saying button class button and button primary. So let's say click me. Same code and inside this one let's say int. Let's say private int. Uh, maybe I equals zero. And let's say private void. Increment counter. I'm going to say I plus plus. So OK, when you click the button again at. On click. Space. Say increment counter. Increment counter. OK, your setup is done. Let's display this counter. In the paragraph. The current count is. At I. Right now we have a small blazer component, which is it says it's a counter running on. Now next step, let's go to my MVC application. I'm going to views under home index.chtml. I'm here now. Look at this. Let's under this. I'll just make it. I'll just say now if you just start with this, say counter. Let's say this is how you start. One second, I think everything correct, right? Yeah. Oops, I just forgot that tag. Let me check my other project. I think this one. I think I forgot that thing. Let's open it. I think it should be. Yes. Views index. Just forgot that tag name. Yes, that's it. Sorry about it. Let's start a div. And then say component. Component. All right, component and then you should say. Uh, render form saver. It is. So, so just what is that thing? So yeah, render mode. Render mode equals. I just copy and paste this one. I think it's the intelligence is not. Let's copy and paste. Right, it should look like this component. Let's say component. I think I don't know why it doesn't support component. Component, yes, and the render mode, it should be like this render mode. And I'm going to say server pre render rendered. That means it's rendering from the server and type type of counter. Counter means my component name. It says it automatically picks up counter. See, whatever the name you picked up here. So it's just counter.razor. See, 
counter dot razor whatever the name is automatically treated as an object and counter let's save this one and try this application if everything is okay it should work fine my setup is okay 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 something went wrong i think i missed something here let's see no, 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 uh, unable to record so please the record so the record Okay, one more thing I missed, I think from here, let's say what I missed on my startup. That's okay. And this one, oh, okay, this one I missed. You have to add this part. Let's go back to your server and then add services dot add blazer server side blazer. Yeah, that's the one I missed. Let's try it again. So make sure you add this part to your existing application and then add this in your startup. Finally, map the hub. Let's try it again. Now it should work fine. Let's close this. Excellent. Now you will see this is the razor counter running from HP. This is my component, which is coming from this counter dot razor. See this one, this one, and these parts. Best part is like when you look at this browser, if you click, there's no refresh. See, it works fine. So imagine the stuff you can do with this, like within your existing ASP.NET application. This part will be just normal ASP.NET. Again, this will be a Blazor component, or maybe it's coming from some server, or maybe a grid. Maybe you have a shopping cart list. You can just click uh, get rid of with the item. And it automatically updates some variable here. So simple as that. So just it's just running your existing MVC application using this component. I'll just go through one more time. This is how it goes. First, you have to, if you have an existing MVC application, get this one, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Razor runtime compilation. That's the first step. Second step, go inside your MVC shared folder, go to your uh, yeah. I stop this. Go to shared folder and click on the layout HTML. Start with this line saying, OK, this is my root. And next step will be script underscore framework blazor.server.js. That's the second thing. Finally, go to your startup.cs with your existing MVC add controller views services dot add razor runtime compilation. That's the next step. And finally, at this, this is what I missed. Uh, and then it should be at server side blazer. And next step will be mapping your signal R hub, which is map.blazer. Nothing to do. That's now your ASP.NET, whatever the ASP.NET core MVC application will support blazer now. So part of your application will be normal MVC. Part of your application can be blazer, but no JavaScript is required, just single C sharp file. Let's go back to my server. I'll go back to my server. If you look at this server, let's set as startup project. Oh, it is startup startup project. Set as startup project. Let's run this. This is a server application. I'll show you some stuff available with .NET, the new .NET 5. It's for the uh, Blazor. If you click fetch data, you will see some data. This these data, if you close in the server, this data is coming from a folder called data and it will look at this whether normal C sharp class is say there's this options weather options. And if you look at the service, it says, OK, this is a read only string freezing, whatever it is, and then make sure. It's coming from this area. See, it says weather forecast, get something, create something random range one to five. That means there will be five with the forecast random stuff will be listed. That's one part, right? This is how it works. It picks up from here. And then if you look at the weather fetch data razor page, it's a normal page which is starting from slash fetch data. You don't have to worry about routing. As long as you say at page slash fetch data, it will prepare the route for you. You don't worry slash fetch data. It works fine. And when you link it using navigation, under navigation controls, shared, shared this nav menu, 
you have to give like this. Doesn't matter. Only thing you have to worry about this part, the nav link and href should be matching this page name. That's the only thing you have to worry about, right? Now it looks at it picks up. It says loading. That's OK. And it picks up from here. See. Forecast service get it. It's on initialized async. Get this stuff and display it. For now for the date time now and it will be getting everything the forecast. This array will be get updated. Say so for each forecast you will have it here. That's how it works. Now there are some new stuff calling. Let's, let's go back to my index razor. I'm going to delete that. You can just create stuff like this. Imagine I create a data. And new data I'm going to say a class. Let's say a class of maybe fruit. Yes, normal class which has a property of. Uh, let's stop this. A property of public string a name. Right, I have this name. Let's say get and set a single normal class, right? So we have this property a public string name. So now we have this class and then I'm going back to my index razor. I'm going to create like this. I'm going to say add code. I'm going to create a fruit class fruit. So I'm going to say new fruit. This is one way of doing it. Right, create the fruit or else you can just do using new C sharp nine context. You can just do like this. It doesn't matter. It works fine, right? So because of this new select syntax works fine. Yeah, the fruit is coming from it doesn't don't worry about it when you just close and come back. It will identify it. So maybe it doesn't it be slow on identifying it yet, but maybe in our next update it will work fine, right? So you can do that as well. So now next step will be let's create a form saying this is edit form. This is no edit form and then I have to tell OK at model. What is the model? say model so which and then let's say fruit right fruit where right. it is let's say okay. so the syntax so why not picking up is reason is like we have to use at using and blazor server dot data now it should pick up. Let's go back to my safe foot. It's under data. Yes, yes. Let's delete this part. Let's start again. Fruit. See, it picks up now. Fruit. New syntax. No worries. Now it works fine. Right? This should go away. Now we have this. Let's start again. So make sure you're using it here, or you can just if it's available, if you need availability of this data for data namespace everywhere, you can go to this imports and add it here. Like this blazor server, like that. Right? So index razor again, fruit. Let's create this edit form. Edit form. The model should be my fruit, yes. Slash edit form. Now I'm going to create something like this. Let's uh, create another list of fruits. I'm going to say uh, uh, string fruits. Let's say apple, grapes, banana, and wood apple. Oops, sorry. And wood apple. So I have my array here. Right? Fruit. Uh, next step will be what is that? Sorry, it should be fruit. Now my model is binded. Now this is this will be a normal form. Next step, I'm going to say maybe let's say uh, radio group input. So these are new things coming radio group. And look at this. Now you can just say OK, like two different things. You can just what you can do is you can say OK, this is my should give a name first name. Name is like say fruit list and bind to what? So you can say, say bind at bind. 
value to this fruit dot name see now you have this input group like right? it means any group whatever we select here it will bind to this name let's go back and select another one input radio a simple one radio and value should be uh, anything anything you can just put there so maybe let's say let's create like this let's list down the fruits let's say at for each and f in fruits with from this list i'm going to say this list start and end let's say input radio value equals f and make sure oh sorry let's make sure value is f and this one let's put a space and say at f so it will be looping through everything and let's make it a break this is ugly code but i know if any ux guy is watching this it will kill me so don't worry about it it's just simple thing i want to show it let's say i'll create something another paragraph here selected fruit is you can just say at fruit dot name that's simple right so this is how you bind it so bind value to this one let's execute and see now we will get to this list of fruits apple and all these thing when you select one you will see here it clicks like that see it's simple as that that's one way of doing it so this is one feature there are lots of things you can just find out it says input group and so best part is like you just bind the model and then whatever you need you just bind it's like a two way of binding it so the class name that's one way of doing it another one is if you look at this one the date i want to show something imagine this data is coming from this service right it says 5 let's look at it it's coming from here let's fetch data now you have 1 2 3 4 5 what will happen if i just type it uh, uh, let's go back to my i say just 5000 let's say 500 so let's click and click uh, fetch data now it will take some time but still you have 500 records what if i make it 5000 let's 5000 close it now let's click on the server so let's click fetch data now you have to wait a bit see 1 2 Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. It's still loading. Now see, let's wait a bit. Now it loaded. Like at least like thirty seconds. It took thirty seconds to load this five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like imagine we have five thousand records. So Blaze has a way of doing this. Like
item content let's go back to my server and fetch data as i remember yes yes sorry the context items and the context the context is okay now let's say items items should be my all the items from forecast forecast this one right it's kind of a for each loop for each variable forecast and all my items it's the same thing now let's go back virtualize let's copy paste this part here and i'm gonna remark these things comment these things now you say virtual context you have the same thing but only thing i replace for each with this virtualized context forecast forecast is like the variables as this is forecast forecast and then the item count will be coming from this variable now you got the idea let's try this one remember we got 30 seconds so at least 30 seconds 35 seconds to load this 5000 records so let's click back and click fetch data see now it's instant the 5000 records if you look at this developer tools let's say more tools developer tools and click back this icon and select here one of these items you will see see the trs loaded here let's scroll back let's just keep keep it as it is just load us some amount of stuff right if you look at here it says 12 12 if you just scroll down look at the this area and if you scroll down see it changes that means it's loading virtually you don't have to worry about it right it's automatically loading these things so whatever the amount of records let's make it 50000 let's test this let's go back to my weather forecast service not 5000 i need 50000 let's express oops sorry i just no uh, let's make it 50000 and just start again and fetch data see still instant that means it loaded, it didn't load at 50,000 and in scrolling, it will just load for you. If you just scroll down, 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 see, it scroll down, so scroll, scroll down, the 50,000 records are loaded in the browser, see, it's like 2157. Still, if you go back to your more tools and developer tools, if you look at these elements, you will see like this, when you scroll up, it automatically loads for you, see, it's dynamically loading, so no worries. It comes through. even the 50,000 records. It just load like counter click instant, right? This is how Blazor works. And I haven't used any of JavaScript. It's just simple C sharp code with your existing knowledge. Guys, if you have any question, you can just shoot right now. So I think this concludes this sessions as well. Let's go back to my face. Let's go back to my. Let's click here. I stop sharing my screen. Okay. Now you will see me. So these are the things. Let's come back here. Yeah. Yes. So this concludes. We have a question. The stuff we have right now. Yeah. Any questions, guys? Yeah. Uh, can we use? So I can see the questions, right? Yeah. Can we use Hot Reload in you know, on Blazor app like Angular or React? Uh, at the moment, uh, we don't have that uh, Hot Reload because I have seen a demo which is supported Visual Studio, but it's still in preview. But on this one, let me share my screen again. So I will show you show you how it done. So let's go back and I think you should share my screen back. So you guys should see the screen. This one hot reloading. Yeah, so it's not actual hot reloading, but we can just mimic that. Yes, I'll just copy my path here. It is like uh, open, maybe copy full path. I'll just go here to my, I'll just say CD paste. I'll just say Blazor server. I'll just stop this one. 
If you're going to want to hot reload, you can just say normally what we run is we say dot net run. So this is how we run an application on dot net. What we have to do is like dot net. What dot net watch and run. So then this will be watching for any changes. So it says what started and it will just start on my server. Now we have it here, right? So let's put it back here and my where is my terminal? Yes, you will see the terminal, right? So this is there. Now if we just go back to my Visual Studio, which is my demo, I'll just come back here saying OK. So if I just go to this index.razor and change something, hello, hello.net conf, and I'll get my browser also. If you just save it, you will see. Let's save first. And you will see it's automatically exit and start in the build back. It's kind of a mimicking it. So now it's building and it's just listen. And then if you look at my browser, it changes, right? So let's go to this area now. Just say you will see. Let's turn back into hello. Hello developers. And when you save it, so it just reloads. See? It just will only thing we have a problem on this part is like it will you lose like if I just select one of these things, it will lose the state. Let's say dot and save it. See, it loses the state. So that's the problem currently we are facing. But there is in preview and in Visual Studio, there's like actual hot roll reloading with state and everything. It will be on next updates coming back. This is the thing what we have. Just you have to start from like this .NET watch run from command prompt. It doesn't support Visual Studio, but but still you can use in command prompt and you change anything. It will works fine there. Right? I hope I, I answer that question. Right. I hope I answered that question guys. So any more questions? I think there are some more. How to mix JavaScript in Blazor if there is a need? Yes, you can. So there is a thing called Java JavaScript interop within C sharp. So I haven't tried it, but there is a possibility. There is a way because everything there are available uh, existing JavaScript components. You can just download it using npm and then use it in within Blazor. You can. So I haven't done it, but it's possible. I have seen it because that's why we get this Ryby. A blazer dot interrupt JavaScript. You can just communicate within JavaScript. There are plenty of tutorials doing it. Search in Google or maybe in web, you will find it. you can do it. Any more questions, guys? That's uh, possible. You can use JavaScript libraries. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. So one more. Yeah. Can we create Blazor app on VS Code and how to run it? Yes, you can. This is how you do that. Yes. Share my screen again. Share. You can see it, right? Uh, wait a bit. Share. Share. Let's close these things. I hope you can. You guys can see. Yes. Close everything. Let's close everything. Imagine you are on. Uh, let's try to. Do more exciting thing like on where is my virtual machine? I wish to relax. We should write in this question race because of uh, let's come back to my virtual machines. Let's make it more exciting. Let's run it under Ubuntu. Give me a few seconds, it will load. Yes, my password. Okay, so it's loading. Where is my Ubuntu? I cached it. Hmm. 
Oh, yes. Now I have my command prompt. This is my terminal. Let's go back to this terminal. Let's say CD playground. Oops, sorry. Oops. Playground. Uh, MK inside .NET. So let's say I say .NET. .NET version. This is my version. Currently version is 5.1. And I'm going to create something like this. Uh, .NET. If you just say list dotnet new list you will see a list of stuff you can just create oh sorry double dash list you will see the stuff you can just create within dotnet let's say if you just want to blazer this is the two things you need see blazer server and blazer will be assembly it's up to you whatever the things you need i'm going to create a new one saying okay so remember this name blazer server you will say dot net new blazer server and output directories like say blazer server demo let's enter now it will create the blazer server for you and running these things okay done restore succeeded now you just say cd you will see ls we'll see under blazer server demo you say blazer demo unless you will see the project here now start visual studio code code dot let's drag this down you will see visual studio code here now again same thing everything is there right just say let's go to terminal new terminal now you have this thing you can just say right mouse click counter dot razor you have all those things now you have the things right you can just create a file yes do that and you can say okay touch you are inside these pages you have to go to these pages cd pages say touch let's say uh, about dot razor enter now you have this file here click come back and you have the razor file you start with like this at page routing about and some code code same code you can just write code and you can just say uh, h1 this is about us going to blaze right save it now go back to your shared folder and go to new menu and sorry new menu this one and select oops now I'll just copy this copy and paste we say about let's change this into about about next step should be clear here dot net run that's it under your project folder now it's building let's wait a bit building now it's running you it will say local loss this one you click your default browser will open in case it should open my control click yes control click yes control click it should open my default browser yes it's opening now it says blazer demo and fetch data everything is there and why this didn't work maybe i didn't save it sorry i didn't save it let's save and stop the server again dot net run Guys, let's this here and it's building. Now it's done. Let's refresh. Now you will see this about page. You have the about. See, that's how you run on Visual Studio Code using command line. Doesn't matter Ubuntu, my Mac, Windows. It doesn't matter. Everywhere it works. I hope you got the answer. Let's stop. Let's go back.